Welcome back to Racing Across America. Happy to be joined now by Jim Miller from Hawthorne. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Seth. How are you today? Very good. How was your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was good. It was busy for us here at Hawthorne, but that's because we had the big stakes weekend right after. So we got one day of a break, and then the, uh, <laughs> the craziness ensued. Yeah, very good. And uh, let's talk about that. Let's go back uh, to Saturday's Hawthorne Gold Cup. Grade 2 event, quarter of a million dollars, a mile and a quarter uh, on the Hawthorne main track. And it'll be won by uh, Red Rifle. Uh, Red Rifle, certainly a very uh, competitive uh, runner from Todd Pletcher with some nice early speed and seems to appreciate the longer distances. But this horse was coming off the turf. That was going to be the question mark. The favorite in here was Carey Street coming off a nice win uh, back on Breeders' Cup weekend out at Santa Anita on the undercard. So Carey Street was the favorite. And for those of us here in upstate New York, FNX was also in the mix. A really nice New York bred who was coming out of a win in the Empire Classic. Those were the horses of some interest. And as we watch the stretch run, it will be number three, Red Rifle. Number 10, Mr. Mardi, Mardi Gras runs second. Number eight, Call Me George, third. FNX, a little bit of a disappointment running fourth. Carey Street, a major disappointment running ninth in here. But I'll also add Red Rifle, ridden by Florent Giraud, who I, I said earlier, we talked to uh, Brian Spencer from Fairgrounds, and Giraud's down there uh, for the winter. But I think he, he boy, he's a, a, a a jock that just it seems to have come to the forefront over the last six months or so. What were your thoughts yeah. on the Gold Cup? Yeah, and I'll tell you this. A couple notes on the Gold Cup. First of all, what a month for Giroux. I mean, he yeah. started the month by winning the Breeders' Cup Spring with work all week and then ends the month with winning the Gold Cup. So he's a guy that's coming into his own, riding some major circuits, and we saw a lot of him here in the Chicagoland area just kind of as he was getting started, honing his craft a little bit. And, and he's really a good, patient rider, but a very good clock in his head. And what you saw in the Gold Cup was this was a race where we expected there to be a whole lot of pace, and there really wasn't. I mean, Red Rifle went out there, got 48 and changed to the half, saved something up in the turn, and Giroux knows this track, so he was able to back them down a little bit in, in, into the turn. And then you hit that long stretch with the long quarter of a mile stretch here at Hawthorne. He opened up again, and, and you saw Mr. Mardi Gras had to go down the center of the track to make that move to finish second. But some of these jocks that aren't necessarily familiar with this track, they, have, they, have, they, they got bottled up a little bit more or less than anything else. And that, that was the problem for some of them. F and X, I think, got bottled up a little bit and then came running late. With Terry Street, there is an excuse. This was a horse that had some problems at the gate. Where's a figure eight bit? And actually, that bit broke when they were in the gate. Oh. So they, they had to remove the bit for Terry Street. So you can imagine for Miguel Mena that he, he had a little bit of a rough time just, just trying to guide this horse around. And that was more or less the trouble than anything else. So make sure you mark that down for next time out with Terry Street. There, there is a definite excuse for this horse in the Gold Cup, and I think you'll see better out of that one next time out. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's funny, you mentioned uh, jockeys being familiar with the track. I'm just looking. Your top three are all familiar, obviously. Jero, uh, Timmy Thornton, and uh, Manny Esquivel, who are all familiar to, uh, to the tracks on the Chicago circuit. Yeah, and that's the thing about it. You look at it, Mr. Mardi Gras took some action, I think, down to five or six to one. And, and, and then Call Me George was overlooked a little bit, but a really good ride by Esquivel. And with Call Me George, there, it was a matter of saving ground, knowing when to move. And, and he waited till they straightened out to make that move. And, and that's kind of the key with this Hawthorne track is you really get the benefit of knowing this track. It's tighter turns. It's a very long stretch. But a lot of times, riders who don't necessarily know this Hawthorne strip will make that move three or four wide in the turn. And they're losing ground the whole way through instead of waiting until they straighten out to make that move. And, and it costs a lot of these guys races. All right, very good. Let's take a look at uh, some of the action for this afternoon. Before we do that, what's the weather forecast for today? It's nice today. Temperatures are going to approach 40 degrees today. Nice. Sunny skies. We have a fast main track. Hoping to get a little water down on the track because the track was a little bit loose yesterday and played towards the front. But if we can get a little water down to tighten things up, I think it should even out the track a little bit today. All right. We'll take a look. Uh, kicking things off in the fifth this afternoon, $5,000 conditional claim or the condition non-winners of three lifetime. These are three-year-olds and up. They're going to go a quick five and a half. Yeah, and the thing about this race, this is the last race of the pick five, last race of the early pick four, and I'm actually going to single on the two horse. That's Senior Tremendo, this one from the barn of Manny Perez. And the thing is this, you, you're, you had Ry Heidi Rose ride two races back, and she's recently retired. Angel Stanley rode last time out, rode a pretty good race, but now you're switching to the leading rider in Manny Escovel aboard. And Senior Tremendo finds a spot where there's a whole lot of pace in this race. This is a horse that should be able to settle back two or three lengths off that early pace. I'm not too worried about the distance. Second time at this level, and I, I think with a, a trip similar to that last start out, I think Senior Tremendo should be sitting in a perfect spot, should be able to catch some of that pace late in the lane. Yeah, and we, get, we, we have a, a decent 7-2 to two 
uh, on the morning line, and that's coming off a, a really close-up second-place finish and a pretty similar event last time. Yeah, and the thing about this race, you know Bad Boy Peter from the outside will take some action there. Uh, Terry Houghton coming in to ride that one. W.W. Concerto's taking a little bit of a clash drop. Diver's been pretty consistent, but those consistent races have been for third. And then you have He Gone on the inside, who, again, is taking a clash drop. This horse always seems to take a whole lot of action here. So I, I think Senior Tremendo may sneak away a little bit. And, and if we're talking sneaking away, it's 7-2 to two of them. That's just fine. All right, very good. Let's move on to uh, the 7th this afternoon at Hawthorne. It is a money allowance event for uh, three-year-olds and up. This one, they're going to go eight and a half furlongs. Yeah, this is the time of year when you see some of these horses that are claimed for cheap tend to step up and run big races. And, and that's what's going to happen, I think, with the five Belega. Three to one in the morning line, so again, not a great price, but this horse was playing for just 5,000, two starts back. And you look at that race, that was a race where they just crawled around the track. There was 51 and change for the half, 116 and three for three quarters, and Belega still was able to accelerate and win by seven in that spot. Then you step up off the claim for 12-5, and the horse got a little bit more of an honest pace in front of him in that start. And Belega, again, just sat back early on, really accelerated nicely in the lane, again, won easily. Now you're stepping up to the allowance company, but again, there should be a decent pace in here. Figure Kim Chaka should be able to show a little bit of speed in this spot. That's a kitten from the outside may go, maybe show best star. So I'm hoping a horse like Belega can just continue that rise. There was a big number in that last start out, but the horse likes this track and has been in pretty good form. Yeah, off, off the claim comes back with a lifetime best buyer figure on the move up the claiming ladder. That was an impressive performance. If this horse can string a couple of those together, certainly going to be up in the mix today. Yeah, I'd have to think so. The other one to look out for in there may be the one-horse Dubai Kingdom, uh, a horse that's been on the turf for most of those starts. But if you look at that race two back, there was a race that came off the turf. That was probably the best race we've seen out of Dubai Kingdom. It was, it was a start where the horse rated closer, really accelerated nicely. I'm surprised they didn't come right back on the dirt. But Dubai Kingdom could be a little bit of a threat there at 5-1. to one. Yeah, th those are the kind that are always kind of head-scratchers. And, and as fans and handicappers, I, we always think we know better than the trainers. But you look at that... And, I, yeah, you have to think exactly what you said. That was a lifetime best buyer figure in that off-the-turf event last time. Most of the PPs that we see on the page are on the turf. But given that start two back, why didn't they come back on the dirt? Well, you would exactly. Have to, yeah, you would have to think this horse is probably going to do well today. Right, and that was a legitimate field that that horse beat. Tallgrass Cat's a very good horse. Hatman's a good horse. I, I, I really don't know why they went back to the turf, but uh, I like that that horse is back on the main track today. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's uh, take a look out at the 8th this afternoon. It is an allowance event for Illinois Breds going a mile and a 16th. Yeah, and in the 8th, I, I like a bit of a pricer in the 8th horse, King's Fortune. This one's 8-1 to one in the morning line. But looking at this race, you have the four Hey Pretty Boy in here. And Hey Pretty Boy was entered a couple of weeks ago and had all sorts of gate problems, slipped in the gate. And, and I just I worry about this one coming back. You're, you're coming back into today's race knowing that the horse will show some speed. But with some other pace in here, I think it sets it up for a closer. And King's Fortune, really a good, solid effort. Two starts back. Closed up some ground late, finished fourth, beaten two and a half. Really never got into the mix zone that last start out, but if Belega runs well today, you'd have to think that King's Fortune is going to run well because it comes out of that race with Belega. Uh, Doug Matthews has two in there. Shadrach Bond could also be a factor, but I think you'll get a good contested pace, and I think King's Fortune can pick up the pieces late. All right, uh, and then we're looking at 8-1 to one on the morning line, so uh, some thoughts there uh, worth taking into consideration for this afternoon. And, uh, Jim, I don't know if you've had a chance to look out uh, at Saturday yet, but I did want to mention for the viewers a couple of nice stakes on the card Saturday out at uh, Hawthorne. We have the Powerless for $75,000. Uh, these are Illinois breads. Summer again off a layoff. Looks a little bit interesting with Channing Hill uh, in to ride. Come on feet, I think it's going to be the one to beat, though. This is a horse for a course kind of play. Seven wins and ten starts. Uh, at Hawthorne, but this is another one coming off a layoff. Hasn't raced since May, but a little later on, the Lightning Jet handicap, $75,000. This one, and again, state breads, but this one is an absolutely solid field. You have, I got it all coming in off a nice allowance win with a triple-digit buyer figure at Keeneland. Sweet Luca for uh, uh, Chris Block has been on turf or synthetics, but boy, running very well number-wise. Creative Art, a nice win last time at uh, Hawthorne. Uh, Coppus or Copus also ran well uh, last time. And Goes, who has a, uh, uh, what, four wins in the last five starts. Boy, that lightning jet on Saturday is really, really solid. 
Yeah, and if it wasn't a state bred race, you'd almost think that was a grade three field. Yeah, and exactly. think about it. I mean, this is a race that these horses for the last couple of years have had to run into work all week. And they, they don't get that horse there, here in this spot on Saturday, but it's a really good race. And then you look at River Bear, who's approaching a million dollars in earnings in that spot. And the Lightning Jet it does have a whole lot of a whole lot of speed. And Channing Hill's coming in because you have I Got It All. And that's a horse that's very, very quick. But actually rated really nicely in that race at Keeneland in that last start out. It's the inside draw, and that's a horse that's going to be extremely tough in there. And then in the power list, Richie Sweetheart is a horse that has a ton of speed, but drew the outside in that field. And you talk about come on feet. This was a horse that was claimed for $5,000 and then has worked his way up, won a stake here in the spring, coming back for the second start here off a long layoff. And this starts even coming off a layoff. But two really competitive races. The weather looks great for Saturday, too, and uh, looks to be a really nice start. Yeah, uh, I didn't actually get uh, get down to Richie's sweetheart. I'm glad you pointed that one out. It was on the last page. But, uh, boy, what happened to poor Larry Ravelli? He's only uh, 20% uh, at the current meet, 29 <laughs> for the entire year. But there was a point in the year where he was a coin flip. He was up near 50% at one point. Yeah, and the thing about it for uh, Larry, I mean, a lot of those bullets, they fired at Arlington when you're trying to win a yeah. title, and then you're coming back here to Hawthorne. It's a little bit tough for the first couple weeks with the switch over to the, the conventional dirt, but these horses, second and third start out over the track, have been running really well, and that percentage has come back up. Yeah, and it's one of those situations, oh, he's only 20%. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, uh, what he was doing earlier this year was just phenomenal. Uh, Jim, we absolutely appreciate the visit, as always. Good luck this afternoon and this weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.